Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my favorite fig varieties that I grow. Um, and we kind of do this video every year. Um, we had this video actually two years ago. We talked about my three favorite figs. It was at the time, I think, uh, Smith, Azores Dark, and Italian 258. But every year we learn some new things. Every year we we uh, really gain some knowledge. We uh, taste different varieties. We acquire new varieties. We we change our opinions on things. And the point I'm trying to make here is that even though I'm going to tell you guys what my 10 favorite figs are right now, um, in fact, I'm going to give you a little bit extra and more than that. I'm going to talk about my five favorite figs, um, my six through 10 favorite figs, and then also a little bit of hopeful varieties that I think could break into that top 10. Um, but like I was saying is that this top 10 is not really set in stone. This is something that's going to change and it, it will change um, in the future. So while I think all of these figs are incredible um, for especially somebody in my climate, I don't really know if they will be in my top 10 forever. I don't know if they're going to be in my top 10 when everything's said and done, when I really narrow this down to 10 varieties. Um, you know, a little bit of background for those of you who don't know, we've, we've grown so many different varieties over the year. At least I've probably tasted somewhere close to 200 or more varieties, uh, maybe even close to 300. I'm not sure. I've been growing figs now for six years, um, and we've been trying to acquire um, as many uh, high-performing varieties as possible in this climate, in a humid place, uh, living right outside of Philadelphia in Zone 7A. We get 40 inches of rain annually about four to five inches of rain a month uh, or three to five inches of rain in the summer per month um, so another another point about that is that well just because I like them doesn't mean that you're gonna like them but I do find that a lot of these figs that are well adapted here are usually well adapted in other places um, although it's always best to consult somebody who lives near you um, and they will probably have a better estimation of what is um, a great variety for you to grow. So let's kind of get into it now. What are my favorites? Well, we have a spreadsheet here that we let you guys view. Um, it's in the description of every video I've ever put out. And you can see right here, this is what we're looking at. This is my top performing figs. And you can see I've labeled them out by different ripening periods, the early figs, the mid-season figs, the late-season figs, and the very late-season figs. I um, estimate right now I want over half of my fig collection, when everything's sort of said and done, half of, over half of them should be early varieties of the earliest figs. They should ripen pretty much right around Ronde Bordeaux or Hardy Chicago. Um, 25% should be in my mid-season, 15% should be late, and then 5% are the figs that I have to put in the greenhouse to give them a head start, to get them to ripen by um, September 1st, the latest. Um, those are my very late figs, things like Black Madeira. So that's kind of a, a little breakdown there. Um, and you can go get you guys can go over here and view this at any time you want. You can see here's a number of varieties, more well over the number of varieties that I'm going to talk about in this video. This is kind of my keeper list right now. These are the varieties that I would consider keepers, but there's some that are above and beyond the others. And one that we've talked about relentlessly is uh, is Smith. And this is a video we did in the past. This is not a video we did. We did this one in 2018, and we air layered this tree so much um, this year. And you can see how beautiful the figs are. Uh, definitely beautiful. They get sugar spots on them. 
which is why some people can have ugly smiths and that's really the only reason but I mean this figs almost as good as you can get it really is it's got this um, it's got a uh, first off all these figs that I'm mentioning in this video perform well here if they don't perform well here I wouldn't even be talking about them um, you know they have to do really well in the rain that's like utmost necessity here they have to not be a, a splitter even though this one looks like it's kind of opening up at the eye here um, Smith and and all the figs I'm about to mention are, are so incredible in the rain and that's really the only reason that I can even get some decent quality fruits here because figs are really meant to be grown in, in drier places they're not meant to be grown here in, in humid climates but some of them are adapted to human environments and Smith is probably one of the best um, it really is one of the best figs and and this fig has been growing everywhere and just about everybody loves it uh, I've only heard like one complaint from somebody and they were in Arizona and I think since that time they've actually changed their opinion so I don't know anyone who doesn't like it I can't imagine someone not liking it it's basically as good as a black Madeira um, but it's mid-season and has incredible rain resistance um, it's also very vigorous it's very productive um, all these figs oh, like as I was kinda saying before they all have great rain resistance but every single fig I'm about to mention not only has great characteristics but it's like an overall rating here I'm not talking about oh these are my favorite because they taste the best if I said what are my favorite tasting figs this would be a whole different list um, and I've already got you can already go check that out for yourself just go to my figs here and you can see the flavor rating in this category and you can scroll down and see which ones are rated a five out of five um, so things like black Madeira and cold Nom Blanc and uh, Del Zermatons and De La Roca you know those are gonna be um, my absolute favorite figs in terms of flavor I think Smith also has a, a rating of five or maybe it's a four and a half yeah it's a four and a half so uh, not the highest rating but um, it's incredible it has a elegant berry flavor that I'm going to talk about quite often in this video so I kind of should just go over it you can see that this is the different flavor profiles of figs and there's a category here called the elegant berry category that I've just I've named it this people have referred to this as exotic I personally think it's a berry flavor that's so elegant that it really just blows your mind um, you kinda it's it's very exquisite like you you almost um, you eat one of these figs I think if you eat a well ripened fig in this category here um, just about everybody I mean I can't imagine somebody not um, just saying wow you know if they if you guys like figs and you eat a well ripened fig from this category you'll have a wow moment you you really will start to if you really think about it you start to wonder um, how nature could create something so incredible I think that's uh, a good way of putting it so for me it's in my favorite uh, flavor category here and overall it's just a it's an absolute winner um, so this is I, I don't really know exactly where to place them one through five I'm not gonna say alright well Smith is number one I'm not entirely sold on that just yet on that idea um, it was my number one fig in 2018 and even 2017 um, but this year I'm not I'm not entirely sold on that so I've kind of changed my stance a little bit but uh, at least putting it in the top five is like a huge achievement it's 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 crazy um, my next fig in the top five here is uh, Azores dark and this fig is incredible um, it really is something crazy here and I've got a bunch of them that I've ripened this year and I was able to even dry some up on the tree and 
we just had an incredible crop this year off of really young Azores dark trees. These are air layers that we took off the mother plant, but we were able to really get this thing basically perfect. I am going to pick this. Um, and it really did blow my mind this year. It really did remind me of like how incredible this fig actually is. Uh, it has a similar flavor to uh, Smith, actually. Um, it has that elegant berry flavor to it, but it's not quite the same. It, it doesn't have some acidity that Smith has. Um, it's very jammy. It's very dense. But it also has like some hints of uh, Concord grape in there um, that I was picking up this year and even um, a little bit of that last year. So it's really, uh, it's really quite good. It really is. Um, let's move on now to another fig that we really like. Uh, and I've kind of grouped this fig with Azores Dark in that they're both hardy Chicago types. They they both have a sim. They're under a similar umbrella of figs, and that they're very similar to each other um, in how they perform and how they behave, but they actually taste different. Um, quite different, actually. I would say Azores Dark is a lot like a strawberry jam combined with figs, and throw a little bit of uh, Concord grape in there, whereas a Malta Black here is what you're looking at when properly ripened is like eating a fig and raspberry jam in one. Um, and it's quite noticeable that that raspberry flavor. Um, so for me, I think uh, they're they're definitely different, but I would I'm just gonna group them up together in this little section here because I really do view them pretty much in the same way as each other. Um, even though they do taste differently, you know, and, and again, they all have overall, every other characteristic is just, it's just insane. Um, uh, the next fig here is Neruciolo de Elba. And you can see right here on the left, this is a Azores dark. And on the right is a Neruciolo de Elba. That's basically black. It's, uh, it's black on the outside, but on the inside here, it's almost black as well. Um, it's an incredible fig. Um, this is a fig that I kind of am calling, I'm kind of nicknaming it as a fig berry because it's kind of like eating a berry, but a fig. Like they're, they're really small figs. The Neruciola de Elba is like, like 10 to 25 grams in size or 15 to 25 grams in size. Very small on average, um, but it's very productive. And the thing that shocked me the most about this tree uh, is that it has the in most incredible ability to dry up on the tree. Uh, it takes about six days. Um, when the weather starts to cool down, it doesn't take all that much longer than six days, but from green and hard, and then when it starts to swell, I start to count the number of days before I pick it. And it takes about six for me to have a Neruciola de Elba that is shriveled on the tree. Shriveled. Not not completely dry. Uh, not like a dried fig here that I, I have from like turkey or anything like that. But uh, definitely incredible. Um, it has the most incredible drying ability of any fig I've ever seen. Um, now, there is another fig sort of just like it that I also call a fig berry but i think it's even slightly better in terms of flavor um because the rucciola de elba is more like uh, a vila de bordeaux in flavor it's really got that complex berry flavor to it like a vila de bordeaux but this other fig verdino del nord which is right here um this one has got more of a uh, elegant berry flavor like Smith and Azores Dark has. It still has the same incredible um, drying capabilities of Neruciola de Elba. And you can see the fig right here. We're probably going to open it. You can see that fig right there is 
pretty much shriveled up on the tree. It doesn't take very long either. It takes probably seven days to get to that point. So it's not like it's a big difference between Neruchiola to Elba. But I would say Elba does dry on the tree easier, quicker, and should be more reliable than uh, Verdino del Nord. This fig actually is goes by many names. It's extremely popular. It's more popular than most people think it is. Because um, it's all over the world. It's all over Europe. Look at that. That is just... Whew, that fig was incredible right there. That's at least a five. Um, I think I gave that one a five. So for me, that one pretty much rivals the flavor of Coldenon Blanc as well. In terms of the texture, in terms of the the uh, the flavor, I would even say the flavor's better. The texture's right there. It's so dense and jammy. Um, not quite the pancake batter or cakiness of Coldenon Blanc or the Coldenoms, but it's really nuts. And that's kind of what I do is I, I've Consider them both like fig berries because they're both so small um, that it's almost like picking off a little berry off of your tree and eating it. You know, you can eat them in one bite. They're 15, like I said, 15 to 25, 30 grams probably at most, maybe 35 grams at most. They're extremely productive, very easy to dry on the tree, but you've got two versions. You got the light version and you got the green version. And uh, for me, it's just like a no-brainer. Uh, I what really sets them ahead is not just the flavor, but those that drying capability that these guys have is that it makes everything extremely easy to. It just makes them so easy to grow, and it makes them so reliable here because not only do they dry up on the tree, which is nice. You know, that really concentrates the flavor, but they, because they have superior drying capabilities, they can handle a rain better than other varieties, I find. They just have a, like a, a better resistance to mold or to souring or to splitting, even cracking. They don't crack. They don't split. I mean, they're just nutso figs. Um, and again, Verdino del Nord, like I, I was saying, has so many names, believe it or not, that um, this one's also called Figoin. You could you could call it uh, Verdal in Spain. That's another name for it. It's all over Europe, um, mostly Spain and Italy. And um, you could probably find it in Portugal. Um it's also believed to be quite hardy. Uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good tree. Um, my next fig in the top five here, and this would this is ending the the top five because um, we have Smith, Azores Dark, and Malta Black in one, so that's two. Neruccio de Elba, Verdino del Nord, and then the fifth fig here in the top five is Moro de Caneva. I think I'm committing to putting Moro de Caneva uh, in my my top five here. Um, it really impressed me, and this is not an old tree. You know, this is a young this is a young tree that I have in the ground. Um, it has a really good drying capability that doesn't take long, probably around eight days. So like Elba's six, uh, Verdino del Nord is seven. Elba's around eight days for it to start uh, drying up on the tree. It's got a bigger size to it. It has commercial potential. Um, it tastes a lot like a Violet de Bordeaux. The, so the flavor is great. And um, for me, it's just, uh, it is probably going to replace Violet de Bordeaux permanently. I think I can probably get rid of Violet de Bordeaux types with just this tree. It's hardy, it's early. It's got all the characteristics we're looking for here. It's a no-brainer. Um, now, I do have a bunch of figs actually in my top 10 that we're going to talk about here. Um, so we have five more, but one of them in my top 10 is actually Violet de Bordeaux. So it's not like I don't like Violet de Bordeaux. Violet de Bordeaux is incredible. 
Um, I would just put Moro de Caneva ahead of it. And I think it is just genuinely superior in almost every way um, that I can so far see. Um, maybe the Bravacrop won't be as reliable. We'll have to figure that out. Um, but Villa de Bordeaux is pretty much the old standard. Behind Hardy Chicago, as Azores Dark and Malta Black are, they are Hardy Chicago types, I would say Villa de Bordeaux is the second best, most common fig that you can find. Both of which, by the way, are adapted everywhere. You can grow in any climate and everyone's going to love them. Overall, has just superior characteristics to it. The flavor, you can't complain about. Uh, there's many people I know that have hundreds of fig varieties and, and, and they've said that Villa de Bordeaux is their favorite. Um, I can't argue with that. It's incredible. It's also one of the most productive figs you can grow because it produces also a really good Brava crop. Um, so for me, I'm, I have to just say that Violet de Bordeaux is, uh, is a fig that I, I cannot believe that I would even consider getting rid of it. Uh, it's amazing in itself that I was able to find Moro de Caneva here. Um, to then say, wow, that's like, you know, this fig must be incredible if you think about it, to then beat out and make Villette de Bordeaux redundant, really. Because um, it is a whole season earlier. Like, it's probably going to ripen at least two weeks ahead of um, Villette de Bordeaux. But Villette de Bordeaux is probably going to beat it out in terms of its Brava crop. So uh, it's hard. It's hard to make that decision. But I do enjoy Moro de Caneva more in terms of the the flavor. Uh, another newish fig that we had this year is Campaneri. And I, I do apologize ahead of time because I know a lot of you guys are going to want these figs and want to grow these figs. But um, these are just not really widely available uh, in the United States. Um, they they kind of came in recently and it's taking a lot of time for them to really spread around or, or maybe they were in the US for a while and it no one really caught on and no one really cared about these figs. Um, for, for certain, a lot of people didn't really care about these figs. Um, you know, I definitely think that Campaneri is going to be a fig that will actually break into my top five. Um, because I think it's going to be a superior fig to Smith. I actually believe that there will be a Smith replacement in the form of Campaneri because Campaneri is about two weeks earlier, maybe even three weeks earlier maybe four weeks earlier it's one of the earlier figs that you can grow it ripens not too far after Ron de Bordeaux um, whereas Smith's probably about four weeks after Ron de Bordeaux uh, or maybe about three weeks after so it's about two to three weeks this fig should be two to three weeks earlier something like that I think it's a pretty decent estimation um, and because of that it reminds me also a lot of Smith the, the fruits are very similar. It has the same elegant berry flavor to it. Um, it really does remind me a lot of eating a Smith when I eat a Campaneri. So there's a lot of figs actually that I'm kind of saying the same thing about. And another one is uh, Socorro Black. So like they all kind of have that awesome, amazing, elegant berry flavor. And they also perform well here. It's just like which of them of that grouping, even Azores Dark and Malta Black we mentioned have that similar elegant berry flavor to it. While they're not the same in terms of how they taste exactly, they do have a similar profile. And because of that, at some point I have to just choose one. If I if someone had a, you know like a gun to my head and was like, choose one, which one would you choose? Right now, I couldn't say with certainty which one I would choose, but however, I do think that Campaneri is going to be that fig that eventually does replace it. And uh, let's see what the inside here looks like. 
because I honestly don't really remember. This is a, by the way, a Campanaria that ripens super late um, in the season. And it still was incredibly good. Look at look at that. Yeah, look at that honey in the inside and the color. And it was dense and it was jammy and it was just wonderful on a young tree. I was shocked. So I'm expecting more from it. I'm expecting better from this fig. And that's kind of, you know, why I don't really have these figs. You know, I'm not offering these figs to people, right? just yet I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have a lot of this available next year but this year I'm propagating as many of these as I can every fig that we've mentioned so far I'm propagating for myself I'm making many many copies of it um, so that I can have more copies of it to eventually when I get rid of some trees I have some trees now that are coming into their own uh, to replace them you know, that's the end goal here with this is to get rid of a lot of trees and then make copies of the trees that I really enjoy the most. Um, so here's a fig that is, this is the best tasting fig I have ever grown myself. I've ever, I've ever, yeah, grown myself. Um, I've had better figs that were grown in California from different people like Doug when he came and visited uh, the stat or the Long Island Fig Festival two years ago, I think it was 2017, he brought some figs that were better than this. Um, also, Brian sent me a fig called Bergen Unknown, and that was from California, probably caprified. <clears throat> so, the but the point is, is that this fig's actually so close to that quality that it's like it's mind blowing. Um, it's almost like I found a fig that I can grow in Pennsylvania that truly, truly rivals the quality in California. It's kind of nuts. Um, and that's what this is. It's De La Roca. It is basically a Col de Dom, which the Col de Doms in themselves can definitely rival um, the figs over in California. Maybe not a Col de Dom grown here compared to a Col de Dom grown there, but uh, certainly of the figs that I've tried from uh, from California that were caprified, this fig is just as dense and jammy and, and gooey and awesome as a Col de Dom, but it seems a lot less finicky. It seems a bit earlier, um, more productive, uh overall healthier like i said less finicky um and it deals better with humidity i think that's the key here because you can maybe throw away everything else i just said but the the fact that it has the ability to dry up on the tree here almost as well as something like a verdino del nord or a moro de caneva is kind of mind-blowing it's a fig from Spain grown in a drier climate. And you would think because Spain's dry, it wouldn't be that well adapted here. But as as Pons mentions in his book, if you scroll through it and you go to the De La Roca page, you'll see that he mentions in the book that this mother tree of De La Roca is growing at a vegetable farm, which is constantly being irrigated and Therefore, he says that there's a higher humidity. It's more adapted to a higher humidity environment um, than you would expect. And that somehow has translated super well here. And if it wasn't for the fact that De La Roca was a late fig, and I don't, I don't really know exactly how late it is, uh, this I would say would be my best fig. So I'm kind of uh, on the fence of saying, all right, well, this is my best because I really just don't have enough information just yet. We really need to grow this out. This is, a, this is my third year getting fruit off of this tree. But it really does take some time. You know, I really need at least five years of, with these trees to really justify. And I don't know anybody um, 
that at least is willing to speak up and say something about De La Roca uh, that's had it for an ex- you know for an extended period of time. Um, there are people who have had it longer than me because uh, I didn't import this fig, uh, but those people really haven't said anything, and they probably won't say anything about this fig. So I don't know if you're going to really get the same information from anybody else just yet, but I want to encourage people to get this one because it really is incredible. Um, it's just in, as dense and jammy and gooey as Col Dom. It pretty much is the Col Dom replacement. So I was looking for a long time, and I still am looking for things like a replacement to Black Madeira which I think maybe could be Colonel Littman's Black Cross sometime down in the future. This fig, I think, is the replacement to the Col de Dames. Um, you know, and like I said, something may actually replace Smith, which is kind of mind-blowing too. So we are somehow gaining some ground here. We are finding something that's actually worth growing above and beyond what's already kind of common here in the United States. Like like Black Madeira, you can make an argument. It's not super common, but it is becoming common. Smith is the same thing. It was very common for a long time, wasn't common, and now it's getting a lot more common. Ville de Bordeaux, very common um, in the last 5, 10 years. <clears throat> Maybe, yeah, about in the last 10 years or so has become very common. So it's kind of like the same story, you know, um, in that we're trying to replace something that's already very common here to then say that this is better, a better alternative, at least where I live, than that particular fig that is that is common. <clears throat> so we have one more fig here that's not in our that we didn't talk about, or two more figs in our top ten. So we're at, I think, about number eight right now. Because Socorro Black is one that is in my top ten. And I also would group up in there Borgia Soak Gris, Violet Sapor, and Socorro Black. I kind of see them all in the same way. I don't really know if they're different. I don't know if they're the same. To me, they all remind me of the same thing. They all kind of accomplish the same goal. They're all incredible. So I'm just... I'm placing them all together here for the sake of this top 10 list. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. The other two that are 9 and 10, uh, one is Sucret. You can see here on this photo, Sucret is amazing. It is wonderful when it, it can dry on the tree. It does extremely well with moisture and dries on the tree very easily. It's more of a mid-season fig. It's quite productive. Um, and the flavor's a lot like a Col de Dom. It's like a mini Col de Dom, but not as gooey, not as jammy. Uh, really does remind me of the flavor, though. The flavor, not the texture. The texture's close, but the flavor is very similar to a Col de Dom. Um, I think there's another fig out there called Col Noir, which I find I'm 99% sure that's the same thing as Sucret from Bode. That's the, the version of Sucret that I have, by the way. And then the 10th the fig, take a guess what it is on here, because it is on here. Believe it or not, it is an LSU fig. One of those damn Louisiana State University figs that all the Louisiana guys go crazy over is in my top 10. LSU Tiger and here's the other issue though because I don't really know if I don't honestly know if the tree that I love and hold so dearly is indeed LSU Tiger there's um, a fig that somebody found years ago I think in Texas or somewhere in the south I think Cliff found it if I'm not mistaken and Cliff found this fig that he named Calderwood unknown and he found that it was the same as his LSU tiger trees and not that I don't believe Cliff but I haven't I have two LSU tiger trees that are pretty mature 
older than my Calderwood trees, but they're kind of in a weird state of shock. They're really not um, mature trees, even though you would think they are because they are such lar they're in such large pots. You would say, wow, that's a mature tree, right? That's a mature fig. But um, it's taken a while for my LSU tigers to get their act together. We've also root pruned them and kind of messed with them a little bit. and So I don't really know if it is indeed LSU tiger. But I, if Cliff is right, and I think he's right, then it should be LSU tiger. Um, I have unfortunately never sold cuttings of Calderwood Unknown to anybody. I've only ever sold cuttings of LSU, of my LSU tiger trees. So um, I would like to get Calderwood Unknown out to more people, but I didn't really prune my tree this year. Plus, there's a giant tree of it somewhere in the south that would be very easy for Cliff, I think, if he's the person I'm thinking of, for him to take cuttings and, and uh, disperse them to people. But uh, for me, LSU tiger, assuming it is LSU tiger, is incredible it has very good rain resistance however it, it won't really dry up on the tree that easily it can shrivel on the tree i had plenty of them this year i probably had about five or six that were were uh or maybe even more than that maybe about eight that were that were shriveled and were of a very good ripeness however um I don't think that's going to be a very common thing that is going to be attainable. I would say the rain resistance is high, but not as high as some of the other figs. Um, it's beautiful too. It's one of the most striking figs, kind of like Campanieri is. It's gray on the outside. Um, it's got nice cracking to it that makes it beautiful. And that's really where the, the cracking kind of messes with the drying capabilities there. But overall, it's uh, it's incredibly flavored. It's got more of like a hearty Chicago flavor to it, like uh, a fruity berry, a strawberry flavor to it. I have definitely picked up a lot of Concord grape notes in the LSU Tiger this year, or the Calderwood Unknown um, figs this year. So I'm really excited for that fig. Um, it's also an, uh, an early fig. It's probably around the same time as Hardy Chicago, uh, maybe a week after, somewhere between early and mid season. And uh, just in general, it's a winner. It's an absolute winner. Um, I love it. I really do. So I think that we could talk a little bit. There is a couple of figs I wanted to mention that could potentially break into my top 10 that I have a lot of potential for. I mean, all of these, I guess, have potential right here in the future. Um, I guess one, a couple figs that I'm, I'm particularly keen on is Black Celeste. Also Blue Celeste. I'm, you know, if we were going to name off, let's say our top 20 or top 15 I'd put black celeste in there blue celeste in there I'd probably put in there either albo or LSU Huye. I put in pastelier um, I have high hopes for Vertolino uh, Colonel Lippman's black cross for sure Aishia Black, UC Davis, or Aishia Black from uh, Porquerolles Conservatory in France. Uh, Negra de Agde, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, what else? Potentially Dell's Ermitons, I think, has potential to be in there, even though it's very late. And this would be like the only very late fig that I continue to grow. Um, I think Delson Wami Gran has a chance. It has potential. Um, Blanche to do Cezanne as well. Maybe White Madeira or Strawberry Verte. Um, I would also think about Conde and I would think about maybe some other Thierry figs that exist out there. Uh, let's see here. What else do I think? has a great shot. Uh, 
Uh, Pisoludo probably has a good chance. Maybe Pecciolo Bianco. San Baggio. Um, Ungirolo. These are, of course, speculative because we really haven't even tasted them. But, uh, yeah, I think there's a number of figs, guys, that could easily break into that top 10 list, and we could have a totally different list next year. So that's kind of the point I'm making here is that things are probably going to change. They will change. Um, but that was the top five, the top 10, and then some hopefuls here that I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. And um, check us out on FigBid. We have some cuttings available for sale still. Um, check us out on FigBoss.com. That's our blog. Subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Take care, everybody.